Greetings all. Something different today. As life has been a little busy, so in this video I would like to show how I painted up my Guvesa Breacher team to a quick table ready standard. A quick disclaimer here that I am by no means an expert painter. This is just a quick method I use to get my towel painted up and ready to play, so I thought I'd share it with you guys here. With that said, let's get to some painting. The first step I took was to attach my mini to a painting handle. There are quite a few on the market, but I personally like this one. It's a small piece of banister railing with a lump of blue tack on the top. Nothing special, but it does the job. I then needed to prime it. To make later steps easier and speed things along, I am priming white. This one is from my local hardware store and not technically miniature paint, but it seems to work well enough for me and it's a lot cheaper, which if you're doing a whole army is quite a good thing. Once the model has been primed white, the next thing I'm going to do is use an all over wash of a brown earthy wash. I have here Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. This will help bring out the cracks and crevices in the armour and give some shading in the recessed areas. You do not have to be too careful at this point. And once this is done, you should have something that looking a little bit like this. Looking kind of disgusting right now if I'm honest, but we'll be fixing that in the next step. So now we have our yucky brown towel, we can start to bring back the white by dry brushing over the whole miniature. I'm going to be using an off-white Vallejo for this stage. For anyone not familiar with the dry brushing technique, you take an old brush that you don't really care about anymore, preferably a large one, get some paint on it, and then smush it into a tissue or cloth to remove most of the paint. This dry brush is then dragged over the mini and it will leave paint on the raised areas without flooding the recesses with paint. It's a great technique for doing Necron Warriors actually. If you prime them black then dry brush over some silver, you're pretty much done. However here, I'm going to be using a slightly less dry brush as I would like to get a little more coverage faster than regular dry brushing would normally allow. So some more of a damp brush. I did two layers of dry brushing with the off-white to really bring out the white colour on most of the armour plates before passing over with another lighter white, more of a pure white colour, focusing on the edges of the armour plates to give a quick bit of highlighting. With that done, I'm going to move on to the cloth, although I do change my mind on it later on. To start with, I was wanting to paint it with a black, thinned with some thinner medium, to glaze over the cloth keeping some of the highlights from the dry brush. This I painted onto all the cloth areas of the model, being the trousers and the gloves. I also painted the grenade in his hand black too, as that would help with the later colour. However, I was not too happy with the end result, so I decided to change the cloth later on. Once the cloth was blacked in, I used the black paint still on my palette to colour in the little ammo clip on his leg, the nubs on the side of the backpack, the little indent at the back of the backpack, and the two tubes on the left side of it as well. Next up I'm going to take some silver paint and thin it a little on my palette so it flows nicely. In this case I'm using Gunmetal Grey from Vallejo and I'm going to be putting this on the pipes that run along his torso and a grenade in his left hand. Do not worry too much if any paint goes on the wrong area here, because none of the paints are really mixed colours, it's easy enough to come back later with what you got on the palette and fix it up. Next up I'm going to paint the various symbols with some gold paint. After thinning it down a little I applied it to both sides of the gun, the emblem on his shoulder, the one on the pouch, and the tops of the pipes on his torso. You could skip that last one if you wanted to do this faster, and just have them silver, but I felt like picking them out a little bit. I also picked out the tips of the backpack nubs as well, but again, this bit is optional. It is at this point I decided to go back and fix the cloth before getting into the washes. So taking some of my off-white, I mixed it with the black I already had on the palette to make a grey, which I then covered the cloth areas with. He's coming along rather nicely now, and this is a good point to go back and fix any mistakes that might have been made on previous steps, and once the cloth is dried, it can be given a quick go over with a black wash to help bring out some of the shading. Sadly my camera turned itself off during the stage, but you should be able to see the outcome here. I also used the black wash to go over the silver pipes. The black wash that I'm using for this is Nun Oil by Games Workshop. The next wash I'm going to use is a flesh tone wash over the gold areas. I'm using Reichland Flesh Shade. 
trying not to get any on the white as it can stain it and whilst it can be fixed easy enough the easiest way to not have to fix something is not to break it in the first place and with that the washers on this miniature are all done so whilst waiting on those washers to dry up I'm going to finish the base my tower fighting on an alien world with pink and purple grass and stone so I'm going to cover the whole base with this Magos purple contrast paint from Games Workshop Taking care not to get any on the feet, I could just slap this on, as it doesn't really matter if it pulls a little too much, as this is the ground. And the one thing about the ground is that it is not usually a uniform colour. So once that again is dry, I'm going to take some Agrax Earthshade and cover the whole base with it to give it a slightly more earthy tone to the purple. And the last thing to do to this miniature is to paint the rim of the base. I gave it a couple of thin coats of black to get a good coverage, and then he is done, nice and simple. As I said at the start, I'm no expert and this paint job does have its flaws, especially when shown off on camera. But for a whole unit on a tabletop it's more than sufficient and they can look quite good. If you like this video, hit the like button and I may occasionally do more painting videos. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. I seem to be able to get a video done once a week right now and I've got plenty of material to keep them coming, so long as I have the time. So a big thanks to anyone who watched this far. Stay safe and have a good one all.